the Chase Thomas Podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. It might be that guy. Oof. Poor Bryce Young, man. Um, I saw a picture where they were like, they compared the side by side. They're like, every new picture of Bryce Young looks like he's growing closer and closer to bubbles from the wire. And it's just, it's, it's true and very sad. Um, poor Bryce Young, man. Um, switching gears a little bit. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they make the playoffs. Mason Rudolph. Um, Jared, is it weird that like Mason Rudolph was kind of decent and kind of good for Pittsburgh down the stretch here? And like, if you don't make the switch to Mason Rudolph, Pittsburgh probably doesn't make the playoffs. Um, I don't think it's necessarily weird. Um, in 2019, like he showed flashes of being a competent backup. It wasn't anything special, but, um, you know, he's been in, he's been with the team for you know since 2017. He's been there a mm. long time. Um, and also the bar wasn't high. Like this has been an awful offense for the past two years. And it's just hilarious that the second he comes in, the Steelers score the most points that they've scored in a game in two years. First time they've had consecutive games of 30 points in three years. And his numbers uh, in that stretch are the best of a quarterback since 2018. Uh, when Ben was still at the peak of his powers. So uh, it raises questions for the future without a doubt. Like the fact that Mason Rudolph, Mason Rudolph's first two starts are better than any two Kenny Pickett games that you want to find without any sort of question about it. So if you're the Steelers, I mean, right there, that's obviously that raises questions for your future at quarterback, which they already kind of had because Pickett hasn't looked good yet. Um, and then against Baltimore in awful weather, he goes out and completes 90% of his passes. Again, it wasn't anything crazy because it was 30 degrees raining. They ran the ball a lot. But to go 18 of 20 in that kind of weather, he made you know, a 71-yard touchdown uh, or he threw a dart, frankly, to Deontay Johnson, who ran it the rest of the way. But he's played really well. Um, and in three games, he already has half of the amount of touchdown passes that Kenny Pickett did before he got hurt. So I think that the Steelers are... They're putting out that, yeah, they we still believe in Kenny. I, I would be violently surprised if they aren't in the market this offseason to either trade for a guy um, and just have some sort of competition, bring in a vet to have some sort of competition in camp because they can't go forward with, you know, saying, yeah, Kenny's the unquestioned starter in 2024. That would be malpractice. And I think Mike Tomlin knows that he's not stupid. Omar Khan knows that he's not stupid. Um, I think that they kind of know where they are and that they took a swing and they missed in terms of drafting Kenny Pickett. And now it's just a matter of what do you do in the off season? Um, obviously they have a playoff game this weekend against Buffalo. I don't expect them to win that game. Um, but there is, um, yeah, there's definitely questions now of what you do at quarter. Cause Mason, Mason Rose is a free agent this year and some team is going to offer him decent money to be their backup, maybe depending on the situation, a bridge starter. Um, so they're going to have a lot of questions to answer at that position this off season. And uh, it's going to, the decisions that they do make are going to have long lasting, uh, long lasting effects. Is it good or bad for the organization to make the playoffs? Is it like, worry you a bit where they're like, Oh, we made the playoffs. See, we're fine. Like Tomlin's making the playoffs we just need to address the quarterback position. We'll be okay. Like we're, we're very close to contention and close to the Ravens. No, I don't think I think making it in this specific way isn't a bad thing because mm -hmm. like you're doing it with a backup quarterback, which like like I said, should tell you all you need to know about the quarterback that you drafted, who mm -hmm. has played horrible for the past two years. And like I said, the second that Mason Rudolph comes in, the Steelers are able to score points magically. Like it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this thing out. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Um and if anything, like it, 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 you know, I know I've, I've been as much of a, hey, maybe it's time for the Steelers to move on from Mike Tomlin, but it does speak to the fact that, um, you know, he still is one of the, the best coaches in the league. Mm. So to get to 10 and seven with, with this team, who, by the way, was down to their fifth safety, their fifth linebacker yeah. off ball, it's incredible what they've done on either side of the ball to be able to get that done. So, um, like I said, doing it in this fashion, I think, um, if anything, it just makes them realize, okay, you know, we're not going to go forward with Mason as like our franchise. I, but I think that they know that the franchise guy isn't on the roster right now. What do you think they do ultimately? Do they 
go quarterback early in the draft or do they make a trade for Justin Fields? Do they go vet? Which, where do you think they go? If it was me, I'll tell you what I would do and I'll tell you what I think that they'll do. If it was me, I've said this before on the show, like my dream scenario is you sign Kirk, you have Mason as the backup. And if you want to draft a guy mid round just to have, then you do that. Um, oh, I've had JP's spoke of this guy. Damian Parson of the draft network has said this guy's name as well. If you want to go Michael Pratt from Tulane to have in that quarterback room. Cool. Um, so that would be my dream scenario is Kirk Mason Rudolph and maybe Michael Pratt. Um, what I think they'll do is probably sign a vet, but it's not Kirk Cousins. It'll probably be the likes of like, you know, a Gardner Minshew or Jacoby Brissett, something of that sort and roll with Jacoby Brissett, Kenny Pickett. And if they do bring back Mason Rudolph on, if they sign two quarterbacks for relatively cheap deals and cool, then there's your quarterback competition for the, uh, for training camp. But, that's basically another punt on another season where you don't have a franchise quarterback. Another year wasted of TJ Watt, another year wasted of Cam Hayward, another year wasted of Mika Fitzpatrick, wasting young years of Joey Porter's career. Like I would like to say that I think they'll be aggressive and go take a swing and try to get Justin Fields. I don't know how willing the bears are going to be to trade with the Steelers anymore after what happened last year. Um, but if Pittsburgh comes knocking and offers at least like a second round pick and change, then I think they'll definitely pick up the phone because, you know, I, I do think that the Bears move on from fields and, and we know and the build up to that draft class. I mean, Mike Tomlin, it was very evident that he was high on field. So mm. I'm not completely ruling that out. I know that a lot of Steelers fans would like to see that. I know personally I would like to see that if uh, in terms of like the quarterback options, if Justin Fields is a possibility, I'm definitely not saying no to it. Um, but I think that the more likelihood is them being the conservative organization that they tend to be, which I don't want it to happen, but knowing this team the way I do, I feel like that's what's going to happen. Mm. Uh, JP, talk me off the Falcons ledge, please. Mm. All right, let's see if we can do this. Um, please, JP. Jared's not going to do it. Please, JP. I I, I mean, I can definitely try. I don't have any. I, here's um, the thing. All right. Go, go ahead, JP. <laughs> it could be worse. You could be the Panthers. No, that's true. In, in all seriousness, um, the Falcons are one position away from actually being very good. But it's the problem that's been with the Falcons since Matt Ryan left. So mm. really, you're just hoping you get a good coach who can find the quarterback. And I think this is the perfect spot for a guy who might have already had coaching experience as a head coach and not the hot shot coordinator. Mm. I don't think Ben Johnson takes his job. It is interesting he's the co-favorite with Belichick. Like, you could not be more different in Belichick and Ben Johnson <laughs> in terms of the next coach of the Atlanta Falcons. I think Bill Belichick is going to remain in New England. Oh. Uh, oh. Because I think him saying he is willing to give up personnel today is very profound. I think mm. that is a mm. very big thing that people kind of looked over today. He's him willing to give up personnel is saying like, yeah, I'm willing to make this work so I can stay here. Because and I know Ziegler is back on the market, so he's back in <laughs> and then he can take like, that back over. Because like, I think like Bill Barnwell said like over the last half of the season, the Patriots have been one of the best defenses in the league. Mm. Like that, he still can coach. Like, he is still a hell of a coach. It's just they need some more – they need some non-Patriots ideas in that mm. front office. So just let Bill give up the personnel decisions to somebody who comes from somebody somewhere else with different ideas. I don't think Bill's leaving. Um, Interesting. I would really like Raheem Morris for this Falcons job. Interesting. I think he has done a fantastic job with this Rams defense. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah. 